Hello everyone, I'm Tejasvi. Today I'm going to talk about health and education sectors in India. India faces significant challenges in providing quality health care and education to its vast population. These challenges stem from a combination of historical factors and structural issues embedded within the country's social and economic systems. The disparities in access to health care and education, particularly prevalent in rural areas, pose a formidable barrier to achieve equitable economic growth and foster human development. Healthcare in India bears a substantial economic burden due to high cost of illness and out-of-pocket expenses. The public expenditure on healthcare, currently around 1.15% of the GDP, uh, falls short of meeting the population's needs. So, addressing this issue requires a substantial increase in public spending on healthcare, aiming to reach at least 2.5% of GDP as outlined in National Health Policy of 2017. So, a primary focus of the investment should is on straightening primary healthcare services to ensure better access and coverage for all. Similarly, educational sector grapples with various challenges, including uh, high dropout rates, inadequate learning outcomes, and insufficient teacher training. So, even though we have measures like Right to Education Act, uh, there are still concerns that uh, there regarding the quality of education that has been providing been provided. Enhancing the quality of education necessitates a concerted effort towards early childhood education, comprehensive teacher training programs, capacity building initiatives, and the regular assessment of learning outcomes. So uh, what are the impacts that uh, healthcare and education have on India? So poor healthcare and education uh, can stop the development of the skilled health and healthy workforce. And that by reducing the productivity and economic growth. Investing in healthcare and education equips individuals with the necessary skills and health to actively co contribute to the workforce. And we may also uh, try to decrease the in income inequality. Disparities in access to quality healthcare and education exacerbate income inequality as these resources are often skewed towards urban areas and higher income groups. And insufficient public health care infrastructure forces many individuals to seek costly private health care services, leading to a significant financial burden, particularly for low-income households. This can even push families into poverty and diminish their capacity to invest in other economic endeavors. Inadequate health and education can also limit individuals' potential, restricting their opportunities for mobility and also economic progress. And uh, to address all these challenges, we need a very comprehensive approach and we'll discuss some of that now. Uh, so first, we have to invest more in infrastructure, uh, prioritizing the public investment in healthcare facilities and educational institutions, especially in rural and underserved areas, is important to enhance the accessibility of the health and education. And also we have we can improve the access by implementing policies to ensure equitable access to healthcare and education, uh, including primary healthcare systems and expanding school enrollment initiatives. Enhancing quality, we can also improve the quality of healthcare and education through training programs for healthcare professionals and also for teachers. So government can also introduce uh, health insurance schemes to cover health and also educational subsidies to make education more affordable for low-income households. And uh, we government can also utilize online platforms for education and also telemedicine platforms to bridge gaps in service. Uh, all the implementations are not that easy to follow. Uh, there can be uh, some goals which can be short-term or medium term and long term. Based on the output the government is expecting, they can divide all the implementations into the uh, specified short term, medium term and long term goals. However, uh, there are so many barriers uh, for this implementation to exist. First one is the funding. So we uh, government have very limited public resources and there are so many competing priorities that may hamper the scale of uh, scale and pace of the implementation. Political assistance from uh, 
bureaucrats or interest from uh, private companies may also impede policy reforms. Building infrastructure in remote and underserved areas may face logistical challenges and require significant investment. Socio-cultural barriers such as traditional beliefs and practices may also affect the uptake of healthcare and education services. Addressing corruption in the health and education sectors is essential to ensure the efficient use of funds and resources. Historical initiatives such as National Rural Health Machine and Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan have aimed to address these challenges and also the Right to Education Act. But still, there are some obstacles that are prevalent and there is need to ensure universal access to quality healthcare and education in India. Investing in quality healthcare and education is not only a social imperative, but also a prudent economic decision. Despite the formidable changes, uh, approach to focus on long-term planning and efficient resource allocation may pave the way for healthier, more skilled workforce and also help in India's economic growth and prosperity.